Welcome viewers, I am Mamta Nangya, PGT Psychology, continuing chapter 5 of class 12th. Today, we will be covering up the psychodynamic therapy along with the behavior therapy. Let's understand psychodynamic therapy first. This therapy was pioneered by Sigmund Freud and this is the oldest form of psychotherapy. It conceptualizes the structure of the psyche, it talks about the intrapsychic conflicts, it talks about the dynamics between the different components of the psyche which result in the source of psychological stress, which result in psychological stress. Now, this therapy was again modulated by the neo-Freudians, Carl Jung and Adler. They modulated this therapy, taking on features from Freudian therapy and then adding on to their own features. But here we are going to understand the Freudian therapy. Now, understanding the methods for eliciting the nature of interpsychic conflicts, what does Freud believe as the reason for interpsychic conflicts and how can we elicit them from the unconscious mind? So, there are two methods for eliciting the unconscious conflicts from the psyche, which is the free association method and the dream interpretation method. Now, free association method is very similar to hypnosis, but it's a modified version of hypnosis, a relatively better form of hypnosis. So, free association talks about associating all the various thoughts without any kind of censoring. It's like the client lies down on the couch and is not able to see the therapist. The therapist is sitting on the side and the client is speaking out any relevant or irrelevant thoughts which come in the mind of the client. Now, these thoughts, if the client feels are irrelevant, are also spoken and are not to be censored because later on the therapist is going to interpret those in relevant thoughts also into some meaning related to the life of the person. So, here no censoring is to be done because the ego which normally doesn't allow the unconscious conflictual material to come out into the conscious, it comes out in other forms as slip of tongue or dreams or any other form. Therefore, here it is ensured by the therapist for a free flow of unconscious ideas, desires and conflicts which have been suppressed earlier by the ego they emerge into the conscious mind. So, this verbal narrative which is free uncensored narrative is a window into the unconscious of the client and the therapist is able to gain access to it and is able to use it later into the interpretation for helping the client understand his own unconscious mind and the conflicts in a deeper perspective. Second aspect of eliciting the unconscious material is dream interpretation. Now, according to Freud, dreams are the royal road to the unconscious. Now, what we see as symbols in our dream, a lot of us do not remember our dreams. Therefore, Freud tells the clients, used to tell the clients to actually pen down those dreams the moment they used to get up and that technique is now wonderfully used by all the therapists. So, in dream interpretation, the dreams are just offered by the symbols, it is not a direct meaning. So, what the client is seeing in the dream is not a direct indication. There are symbols which are interpreted by the therapist to understand the deeper conflicts present in the unconscious of the client. These are the latent material which are the indirect expressions because the ego doesn't really allow for a free expression of ideas and conflicts. Otherwise, it will cause a lot of anxiety to the client. Therefore, the ego suppresses all those thoughts and all those ideas which result in anxiety. That is the re reason why people use defense mechanism which we have covered in chapter 2. So, these are interpreted and understood as the unfulfilled desires of the client. Let's understand now the modality of treatment used in psychodynamic therapy. The first modality is known as transference. Now, transference as the term literally means is transferring of negative or positive thoughts and ideas on to the therapist. Suppose the client has had a very punitive father who has been very punishing and therefore the client has not been able to express himself for the way he or she was. Therefore, all those suppressed thoughts which or feelings which the client could not share with the father or could not tell to the father are now being transferred on to the therapist. So, transferring of positive feelings on the therapist or the negative feelings, it could be a negligent mother who never paid attention to the child, all those feelings are also transferred. So, transference is a process of emotional identification. Now, here the therapist maintains a very permissive and a non-judgmental attitude, only then all these conflicts are going to emerge. 
and the client will find it secure to transfer the frustrations, act out his anger and fear and depression which was harbored for the past authority figures but could not be expressed at that time. Therefore, the anxiety or all those suppressed thoughts which are onto the therapist, it could be the positive ones where the client idealizes the therapist, seeks his approval in a positive manner. Negative could be feelings of hostility and anger, the resentment towards the therapist because of the past authority figures. The second modality of treatment is known as resistance. Now, transference is met with the resistance. Obviously, when these thoughts emerge into the conscious, which have been suppressed by the ego for so long, it results in a lot of anxiety. Therefore, the person unknowingly resists these thoughts. It could be a direct resistance, a conscious one, where the client hides any such thoughts which come into the conscious mind. It could be unconscious where the client forgets that he had an appointment for therapy or the client misses out the details of the therapy or the client, you know, any way in which the client unknowingly misses out the therapy, that is the unconscious resistance. Now, in this manner, the client is opposing the progress of therapy so that he or she can protect himself from the recall of painful unconscious memories. Now, this conscious one which information is hiding, hided from the therapist is also overcome later by confrontation process. Now, confrontation is a process under interpretation which we'll just cover in a while. Unconscious resistance also we have done. It could be, suppose a client goes silent for the whole duration of therapy, does not speak. Look at the kind of suppression that is there, the kind of repressed memories which are there in the unconscious. That is an example of unconscious resistance. So, a lot of times a client coming late for therapy, missing out on appointments, becomes silent. All these are ways through which he or she is expressing the unconscious resistance. Now, like we discussed, it is overcome by confrontation where the client is made aware of these resistances, these emotions which are negative, which are causing this resistance. Once the client re-experiences it, once the client is able to understand in greater detail about the kind of anxieties he, has, he or she has been carrying for this while, he is able to overcome it and is able to integrate the unconscious information into his conscious self. Now, let's move on to the third process of this. This is interpretation along with which we have confrontation and clarification under interpretation. So, interpretation talks about the way therapist uses the unconscious information, the material, to make the client aware of the meaning of his thoughts or conflict. Obviously, because the client is not aware of the meanings, the hidden, deeper meanings of the unconscious, because all the information comes out in the form of symbols, which are not understood by the client. So, interpretation is the major task of the therapist, where he is able to make the client aware about the hidden conflicts, because of which the person is behaving in a certain manner or the person is carrying the feelings in a certain manner. So, this awareness because of the childhood, because according to Freud, everything goes back to childhood. The conflicts are because of the childhood experiences, the deprivations in childhood. Therefore, interpretation is a very important process for healing in psychotherapy, psychodynamic perspective particularly. Under this, we have confrontation. So, the unconscious material is brought to the conscious. Here, the therapist points out to the client categorically about the aspect of the psyche which is leading to conflicts. Second important part of this is clarification. This basically means the therapist brings out those confusing events for the client and brings it into sharp focus, separating or highlighting the details which are important from the unimportant ones. That is about interpretation. Now, this repeated process of confrontation and clarification along with interpretation is known as working through. Working through helps the patient understand himself better and also understand the source of the problem and is able to integrate the unconscious material by reliving the experiences of the past and therefore integrating them into the conscious mind. Now, the outcome of working through is known as insight. Insight is basically an intellectual and emotional understanding of the problem which has been there for a very long time. This basically means that the client becomes self-aware, is able to understand the deeper cause of his problem or his behavior and is able to integrate it, accept it as a part of his personality and move on with life. 
So this understanding ensures that the client or the patient is able to change himself, his behavior, is able to let go of the symptoms which were serving a purpose and is also able to accept the emotions attached with a particular situation that is the unpleasant event. So all those conflicts of the past or the defense mechanisms are not required now once the client has been able to get insight into his problem after working it through. Let's understand the duration of treatment for psychodynamic psychotherapy. Now, this normally carries on four to five days per week for a number of years. Let's understand the stages of psychodynamic psychotherapy to summarize it. The first stage of this therapy is the initial phase where the client or the patient becomes aware of the general procedures, the rules, the routines and establishes a rapport or a relationship with the therapist and is able to recollect material from the unconscious to the conscious. The middle phase, which is the actual phase of treatment, involves transference, resistance, interpretation, working through. Also, the last stage is termination stage, where the client has gained an insight into his own problems, has recovered, and is now better equipped to handle his own life issues in a positive manner. Now, let's understand a very important point here. Psychodynamic psychotherapy is basically used the maximum for somatoform disorders, dissociative disorders and schizophrenia. These are the major disorders for which this therapy is prevalent and used. Now let's move on to the behavioral therapy. Another major and important therapy from the exam point of view. It postulates that psychological distress arises because of faulty behavior patterns or thought patterns. It focuses on the present thoughts and behaviors of a client. This aspect is very important for helping us compare it with the psychodynamic therapy. Psychodynamic therapy talks about past, childhood and unconscious information. Behavior therapy talks about the present behaviors of the person. What you are able to see because that's what the theory also says. So applying the learning principles or the learning approaches with the use of systematic aspect is the behavior therapy. This therapy focuses on the symptoms and what is seen in the behavior. Those changes can be brought about. So this therapy is extremely useful for the treatment of phobias, for anger outbursts, for anxiety, for depression and excessive fears which we call as the panic attacks. The method of treatment followed in behavior therapy is the first one is interview where a behavioral analysis is conducted to find out what is the malfunctioning or the problematic behavior which causes distress to the patient. Now for this antecedent factors are important to be understood. The antecedent factors basically mean the cause which is leading the person to indulge in a problematic behavior. So the trigger it could be for instance a person is overeating. So what is the reason because of which the person is resulting in overeating? It could be stress. So that is a triggering factor. It could also be an aspect where a person, uh, it could, another example that we can add on here is the person is not eating dinner properly. So what could be the reason because of which he, he or she is skipping dinner? that could be the triggering factor which we need to work on. Once we identify this, it becomes very easy to understand the maintaining factors, the factors which result in the maintenance of that faulty behavior, persistence of that faulty behavior, because that is very reinforcing. So if we can change that reinforcing factor, we can definitely bring about a change in behavior to make it more adaptive. So the aim of this therapy is to eliminate the faulty behaviors, substitute them with adaptive behaviors and this is done by understanding the antecedent or the establishing operation, the cause, the trigger because once we can change this cause to incre by increasing or decreasing the reinforcing value of a consequence, so we can make dinner more important by reducing the snacking time or the snacking material so that the child values dinner than the snacks. We can also do it by a manner in which a child reduces anxiety related to academics. Suppose a child is missing out on academics and is escaping the classes. So we can reinforce the behavior of studying by having extra classes or giving extra time to the child. So the trigger which was resulting in embarrassment related to studies is changed. It is the behavior of studying is reinforced and therefore the child is able to study effectively. The consequent operation is the next step to understand the behavior. 
For example, praising the child for eating dinner, which encourages and establishes this behavior. Now, today we have covered up psychodynamic therapy as well as behavior therapy. We have understood the difference between psychodynamic therapy and behavior, uh, behavior therapy. The techniques of behavior therapy are still to be done, but the concept of behavior therapy which we have just included, behavior analysis, the establishing operation or the antecedent along with the consequent operation that is the result, the concept of reinforcement and in psychodynamic therapy when we understood what is psychodynamic therapy, which disorders it is used for, how is it really done, the method of eliciting the conflicts and then working out those conflicts to help the patient integrate them into the personality. That's all for today. Thank you.